Hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Desi. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell next subscribe button to turn on post notifications. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. Today we'll be uncovering the mystery behind the Polaroid of missing Tara Lee Calico. Miss Tara Calico was born February 28, 1969. Tara Calico is from Bellin, New Mexico. Tara's parents are David Calico and Patty Dole. She has a sister named Michelle and a brother named Chris. Tara Calico was a bright, beautiful, active person. She loved to ride her bike 36 miles every morning. Tara enjoyed playing tennis with her boyfriend. At the time of her disappearance, Tara was also enrolled as a sophomore at University of New Mexico at Valencia, where she was studying psychology. She was incredibly smart. Tara Calico had brown hair with hazel eyes. Her height at the time of her disappearance is 5'6 and weighing around 120 pounds. She has a distinct <laughs> scar on her right shoulder and a mole birthmark on one of her legs. She was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, white shorts with green stripes, ankle white socks, and aqua tennis shoes. She was also wearing a gold butterfly ring with a diamond insert, a gold amethyst ring, and half-inch gold hoop earrings. So, on the day of her disappearance, it was September 20th, 1988, at 9.30 a.m., she kissed her mom goodbye, and then she went to go on her usual bike ride, which was that 36-mile ride. And instead of taking her bike because her bike had a flat tire, she took her mom's neon pink bike. And her mom was a little bit worried about her, so she had her bring mace, but Tara thought nothing of it. She thought her mom was being a little bit too overprotective. And then later that day, she was supposed to play tennis with her boyfriend at 12.30 p.m. However, that didn't happen. And you're gonna find out why. So, at around 11.45 a.m., Tara was last spotted by three men driving south on their way home, pedaling on her mom's pink bike, while an older, off-white pickup truck slash van followed closely behind her. Then another man driving south also saw the same thing, saw the same car still falling behind her, with her being very unaware, of course. Yeah. So, Tara did not come home. Patty Dole, her mother, got worried and they decided to look for her. They found that she had the next day on the west side of the highway, just four miles from when the last man saw her, which was about around Rio communities, police found a set of bike tracks that veered off to the side of the road onto the shoulder and then led to a spot 100 yards away where they discovered some tire tracks and a fresh oil slick. They also discovered a trail of footprints that led to a spot. That led to something even more weird, which was her Boston cassette tape and the front plastic window of her Walkman. And it was broken. And the rest of it was found 20 miles away from where the first spot was. Her stepfather, John Dole, described skid marks as a possible struggle, which you know, with her having a creepy white van falling behind her, it doesn't surprise me. And with her walkie-talkie being destroyed and her bike tracks veering off to the opposite side and a bunch of footprints, this kind of, you know, makes me think something definitely happened. So, my question to you is, why do you think that her bike tracks were found on the side of the road on a shoulder and then a hundred yards away from that were tire tracks and oil. I think it's possible that Tara had tried to get away from this person that was following her but unfortunately while she was trying to get away she might have accidentally like 
slipped off of her bike and wrecked it and then this person obviously was easily able to take advantage of her because she had fallen and so they were trying to grab her. I think that they decided to kind of like dump her stuff a little bit farther away because they didn't want it to seem too suspicious to the police. However, I think the fact that the stuff was found so far away from her bike just makes it seem even more suspicious. I agree, for sure. Why do you think her stepfather described the skid marks as a potential struggle instead of her, you know, like, just veering off to the side to take, like, a shortcut? Well, obviously, if someone is following you that close and you are scared for your life, obviously, there is going to be some sort of struggle. Struggle. So, obviously, you know, skin marks do indicate that she was potentially struggling trying to get this person off her back. But, unfortunately, that didn't work. She was really trying, but... So, later on, a woman from St. Joe, Florida, she's in this parking lot, and when she looked at the ground, she saw a Polaroid picture fall out of this white van, and in that white van, it had this man that looked to be about in his 30s, he had a mustache, and he seemed a little bit suspicious, so she obviously picked up this picture. The picture was of basically some people claim could have been Tara. Also, it couldn't could have not been Tara, but it was basically of a young woman with her mouth duct taped shut, and then there was also a boy in there as well. So obviously, her seeing this, she's going to report it to the police, and she also reported the van that it fell out of to the police. However, the police were not able to get his license plate. They were not able to track this van down. So we do not know who this man driving that van or that white truck, that vehicle was. There was also a factory analysis that was performed later on that basically proved that this picture had to been taken past May 1989. However, they did go and try to test this picture and do like a more in-depth analysis to see if that maybe this picture was Tara. Unfortunately, the results were inconclusive. Regardless if this was Tara or not, it sparked a lot of the media it grabbed the media's attention and people were freaking out on Facebook about this picture and trying to figure out if it was her or somebody else obviously this picture was very horrifying so my question to you first is do you think that man in the van could have been involved in Tara's disappearance I definitely think so especially if he was following very closely behind her, like witnesses described. It's a little creepy and stalkerish sometimes when people are on bikes. Vehicles will do that or will intentionally try to get hit them so they can, you know, pull over to the side and then just abduct them. Another question I have for you is why do you think the police were unable to track down this vehicle, license, information, and everything. But the reason why the police couldn't track this van slash truck is because of the fact that if they only had a partial license plate, I know when it comes to running things through the system, if it was only a partial license plate, then they wouldn't be able to pull up the full records of the van slash truck even with the description because there's a, a lot of vehicles out there that are white vans and trucks and depending on what part of the license plate that they have if it was a partial i'm sure there's a, a lot in the system that would match to that as well I'm sure they could have probably went off of like address and where they lived and all that stuff if it was relatively close to the area but 
It's also like a long shot, especially if a lot pop up in the, the system. They had a full plate. Uh, maybe a reason why they couldn't catch the van slash truck is maybe it was stolen. Maybe the owner was deceased and the owner slash driver was unknown now. There's a lot of reasons why they wouldn't have been able to catch this van truck. Fortunately, it's actually really common in cases like this that police can't quote unquote track down these vehicles. Right. Another point I want to mention, which is going to be another question too. So we know that this picture, Polaroid picture, was found in Florida, which was like 1,200 miles away, and that after doing a factory analysis, the picture had to have been taken past May 1989, and it ca they came up with inconclusive results. With all that information, do you still think that this picture, what that Tara was actually the girl in the picture? Yeah, I mean, the picture could have still been, even by factory analysis, because nothing's 100%, of course. There is, like, a, you know, always a 1% or 2% or however much percent chance that it could be wrong, of course. So this picture could have been very easily mistimestamped or stamped. It's crazy, though, that this picture ended up 1,200 miles away from... Yeah, that is crazy, though, although if she was kidnapped in the span of, from the time she was kidnapped to the time that this photo was, you know, time-stamped, you can get pretty far, especially 1,200 miles, if even on foot or whether you're driving. Yeah, you know, if the van really did take her driving was, they would have been able to get to Florida in a few days. Yeah, no, for sure, they definitely would have because even back then vehicles still drove fast enough although you know right heading on traffic heck, it take over. yeah heck i'm like almost 900 miles away from you but i can we can still get there in like 16 hours so which is less than a day so yeah very much so all right so we are gonna get into theory number one which is a hit and run so, 20 years after her disappearance, Renee Rivera, a Valencia County Sheriff, said he knew what had happened to her. According to him, boys who went to her school drove up behind her in a truck and either ran her over or some sort of incident followed after that. Both were assisted by two other men to help cover up the crime. Rivera states he knows the names of those involved, but that without a body, he can't make a case, of course. John Dole, his, the stepfather, disagrees and said that the sheriff should not make these comments if he's not willing to arrest anyone and said that strong evidence should be enough for a conviction. Going off of that theory, do you really think that two teenage boys hit her and had help from two other adults just to cover this up? Anything in this case is possible, so it is possible that two teenagers accidentally hit her and obviously teenagers not wanting to get in trouble, they're going to go and listen to someone else, so these other two scary men could have came across them and been like, we know how to like hide her body and everything, we can help you get away with this or whatever, so that you don't get in trouble by their parents. And these two teenagers might have been scared enough that they just didn't want to get in trouble with the police so they decided it would be good to let these men help them hide the body which is unfortunate but that could have very well happened it is interesting that Rivera also does say that he does know who but he's not gonna go out and come out to public and say who he thinks did it but again, obviously without a body and everything, you unfortunately can't just go around claiming stuff, but he, he could very well know the truth. Which leads me into my next question. Why did the sheriff wait 20 years after her disappearance 
to make this public knowledge instead of when that incident happened and when he knew. I think he was definitely, the sheriff definitely, Rene Rivera was definitely in the wrong for waiting that long if he knew this critical information, which could have helped solve the case if this was really what happened. Um, so it definitely is kind of like really odd that he waited such a long time. He might have waited such a long time because maybe he knew these teenagers and he knew their parents or something and maybe he didn't want their parents to look off, like look like bad people. Or maybe that, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but maybe after the two teenagers and other men had hit the body, maybe they did pay the sheriff some hush money to be quiet and obviously you know not sheriffs don't make the most amount of money in the world so obviously he would have taken the money and would have kept his mouth shut for that amount of time so another question do you think renee revere the sheriff was one of the men involved in helping cover this up it is very possible because that could be why he kept his mouth shut for so long and maybe that's why we don't have any potential suspects for hit and runs. Police officers are supposed to take hit and run incidents very seriously and in this case clearly he really did not take it as seriously as he should. I, you know I wouldn't exactly be surprised if he might be involved somehow. Into theory number two, that Lawrence Romero Jr. was the one that killed her. So a man named Henry Brown had a deathbed confession. His deathbed confession, confession was in Lawrence Romero's basement. He said that he saw a woman covered in blue tarp in his basement and that this woman was clearly dead. And then also, according to Henry Brown, he says Romero Jr. and Leroy, Leroy Chavez supposedly had the hit and run incident. And then after they accidentally hit her on her bike, then decided to rape her body. Also, apparently there was supposedly a written confession written to the sheriff, Rene Rivera. However, it says that supposedly that written confession was destroyed by Romero's father, Rivera, and there was no arrest made. Also, what is important to note is Romero shot himself in 1991. Was Henry's Brown confession of a woman covered in blue tarp in Brown's basement true? It could have been true. Unfortunately, we don't have evidence, and the fact that Romero shot himself in 1991 and Henry Brown only confessed this on his deathbed, a lot of things could have been covered and cleaned up at that point, so whether or not that evidence would even still be there is a good question, but anything's possible. His deathbed confession could be very true. Another question I have for you. So if there was really a written confession of Romero actually doing all this, mm -hmm. why did Rivera decide to destroy that evidence? Because he didn't want to see his son go to prison for a crime that he committed. Whether it was an accident or intentional or not, he wanted to protect his son at all costs and protect his future. Like, I think any normal parent wants to, unfortunately, but so he, you know, decided to take things into his own hands and rip it up, thinking, you know, Romero's gonna go on with his life, live it like normal, not thinking that he would shoot himself a couple right. years later, but I way. think, I mean, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> But I think Rivera was just, you know, protecting his son, of course, um, even though what he did was completely wrong and messed up. Right, I can agree that parents definitely, like, will go out of their way to protect their kids. How we even saw it with the Gabby Petito case, with all that, like, unfolding, like, 
Brian. Yeah, something. Brian. Brian Laundry. Yeah, the Laundries. You know, really covering up their son and everything. Up until he committed suicide. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think Romero shot himself? Could it be because he was involved in Tara's disappearance? I definitely think, you know, Romero could have shot himself out of guilt from being involved in Tara's death disappearance. But also, Romero could have uh, shot himself for completely unrelated, you know, reasons. People tend to kill themselves when they do get depressed and anxious or... You know, they do feel immense guilt about something, so they decide the only way to, you know, fix their problems and the only way to go out is to shoot themselves. Even though it's like the, probably a very painful way to go, especially if you don't die instantly. But it's like, you know, you're gonna suffer, so maybe he wanted to suffer before he died. Right. And we we don't know much about his mental health or well-being at that time, so who knows. What gets us into our last theory, which is going to be that Rene Rivera, the sheriff, did it himself. He never released potential suspects, he never really pursued his own son Romero being involved, and the fact that the polar picture doesn't exactly 100% quite match Tara could point us in the direction that that picture was falsified to throw us off our tracks. Yeah. So my question to you is with knowing what all has happened with his statement and his son, do you think the sheriff was actually the one who killed her? I think it is very possible. It's very interesting how many potential leads they could have had with this case but nothing got really that far so it makes me think that he could have possibly been involved also you would think if he was doing his job properly so if it was a hit and run accident he would make sure to do everything to find those two teenage boys and the other men that were involved in hiding her body or if even his own son was involved in her disappearance if he really was truly doing his job correct, he would definitely, you know, investigate his son more. But that clearly was not done. So that's definitely a little bit suspicious. Also, you know, maybe he never released any potential suspects because even though to the public those people seem like potential suspects, maybe the sheriff was the suspect all along. And then also, like, the poor picture also could totally not even be related to this case. It could be another young woman that was also taken advantage of. Because this polar picture was found 1,200 miles away. And sure, I understand, like, if she was kidnapped, obviously you can get very far. But at the same time, you know, when people are, um whenever there's like an amber alert or whatever like obviously they're gonna be looking at like pretty much every white van slash truck and it's you know you have to really be smart about it because it, any little thing you could get caught very easily so i definitely think that he could be involved so that leads into my next question as far as if he did do it, what motive did he have to do it? So that is very interesting. Like, why would he go after this girl, especially considering, like, she had great grades and she was just doing well in life. So one of the motives he could have done is maybe he didn't intend on killing her first, but he intended on raping her or doing horrible things to her because men will take advantage of pretty women so that's what could have happened but knowing Tara she probably was a badass bitch and she probably <laughs> was trying to put up with the fight and he thought the only way to get away with this and he didn't want to get caught is to just kill her and that's what he did I mean all of them are pretty pretty good but I feel like, first of all, Rene Rivera is full of shit. Yeah. I feel like he is completely full of shit. I feel like 
the more likely theory is the fact that Lawrence Romero killed her and the sheriff decided to cover it up and try yeah, to put it on these possible. two boys to throw them off his tracks. Yeah, he could have. Yeah, and it's easy to take advantage of other teenagers because obviously, you know, him wanting to cover up for his son and, you know, it's really easy to just go and say somebody dead like a hit run like two teenage boys and scare them into them thinking and that they're guilty, but they're not. Yeah. Also, right. what could have happened, too, is that the boys could have really, truly accidentally hit her and then after she fell off of her bike, then Lawrence Romero could have just been driving by and he saw this pretty woman and was like, I'm going to take advantage of her and just took her away and then did his no to be sent again. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of creeps out there. Like, who sheesh. And that might well, be why, you know, if the boys accidentally hit her, that might be why they didn't come forward because... They, yeah, they didn't want the police to think that they were the ones or whatever, or to pin it against them. No, I, I mean, like, I understand that completely. If they, you know, if that is, like, something that did happen, because, right. man, if that happened to me, I would be scared shitless. Right. I wouldn't know what to do. Right. I would lose my of, mind. First of all, it sucks that you accidentally hit someone, but then to have someone else, like a kidnapper, just come out and just take them, it's just like... What are you supposed to do? Your first instinct is fight or flight. So you fight for yourself or you run yeah. away. Yep. You don't Pretty think much. about the other person, unfortunately. <laughs> but this yeah. shit, I'm out. But this shit, I'm out. I don't know what happened, but I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> to this day, we do not know exactly what happened to Tara. If the polar picture truly was Tara or not, the FBI does have a reward of $20,000 for any critical information for solving this case. Tara would be 53 years old today. We hope one day her family will gain closure. Thank you for listening to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. Remember to always keep your eyes open because you never know when someone's fucking creeping around the corner. (laughs) 